the sort of idea of shift from television to digital, I think is, is true. The big sort of issue I have is I hate the word digital. I don't know what it means. Everything is digital. Video delivered to your set-top box is digital, right? Video delivered to your, you know, if you have Netflix up, that's digital. So I actually believe that the underpinnings of what we're talking about are actually fairly flawed because we still want to bucket it in ways that frankly just no longer make sense. And the upfront always made sense because there was limited inventory, right? So there's only so many commercial pods in a Walking Dead or a Breaking Bad or, so the upfront made sense. Increasingly, the upfronts make less and less sense because networks are no longer doing sort of long run sort of television series. You look at these sort of events of sort of 10 episodes or almost moving to a more British like model where there's six episodes or it, it actually is coming faster, right? So you don't necessarily need an upfront in order to look at a calendar year. And that's certainly true across the other, other mediums, right? And display, digital display makes no sense at all in any kind of social, because the inventory is not limited. And that's actually one of our core problems, is that we sort of ignored what we all learned in eighth grade, which was supply and demand, and we created endless supply of many types of digital platforms, and that's problematic. So I think the shift is real, and the shift from a sort of people's behavior is also very, very real. And I, I started this conference by talking about we cannot divorce who we are as people from what we do. So if we're all sitting at home watching VOD and fast forwarding and not clicking on banners or opening emails, how in the world can we credibly sell that to our clients? So I think from an agency perspective, but even from a brand perspective or a technology perspective. So the shift is real. I think the underpinnings of what's happening are actually more fundamental than just money moving. I think actually where that money is going there's a, there's a lot of pieces up in the air. I mean, you look at a Netflix or an Amazon Fire, those aren't even commercially supported experiences, and nor do I think a, a, a consumer would accept commercially based experience being inserted into that platform. So the question then becomes, where do you spend money? I think the notion of branded content is the silver bullet is wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and it is, sort of where we've always been from an advertising perspective if you look back to the earliest days of the soap opera, right, which we all talk about. So I think the sort of premise of it is exactly right. The main issue actually that I think we're facing as it relates to branded content is discoverability. And I've spoken about this a little bit, but this idea of the disappearance of the channel, if you will, from a television station perspective. When you turn on HGTV, you have an absolute expectation of what's gonna come across. If you turn on Lifetime or AMC or, you know what that channel is going to contain at some level, right? You're turning on Bravo, you have a very specific thing. We don't have that sort of curation ability or technology inside of, for content. So there is beautiful and just exceptional branded content that's out there. It's almost impossible to find at any kind of scale. So. Even on, if you look at YouTube, I refer to YouTube as an ocean, right? And you're doing a beautiful piece of branded content. It's like dropping some salt into the ocean. And you could certainly hope to promote and, and buy reach, but it, it is going to increasingly be difficult to be found unless we really examine discoverability and content curation and really think about how we sort of find that content as people. I mean, shareability is the only way that we're working through discoverability. I mean, it's, it's truly the only sort of way to make sense of the madness or the jet stream or the ocean, as, as you said. So I think the shareability piece is critical because that's how we're now consuming information. It's what's coming through on our Facebook feeds as we're scrolling through. But that also is a very, that sort of has its own issues around you know, most of those videos don't air with sound because you're watching them in public places or elevators or your office. And so that also changes the nature of what content looks like. So I think engineering shareability is a wonderful concept. I think it's also very difficult um, because what people spark to will oftentimes be something surprising or different and, you know, trying to get that, trying to get that out there. But 
there is a sort of, I think, a cultural norm around sharing more and more things. So that, you know, you're, I'm in all these moms groups on Facebook and the amount of sort of commercials that get shared, there's a lot of that. And so I think shareability is real. I think engineering it is real, although we may be overstating engineering. Um, but you're right that where we've come, come from, the sort of notion of create a viral video, and my joke always was it's sort of the equivalent of, you know, I want you to go out and catch a cold today. It's like, are you going to lick every doorknob or how are we going to actually get there? Um, but the idea of really creating content and videos and things that people share is ultimately what we all aspire to do.